Welcome to this uh, hands-on session for the DS Prime Taper Guided Surgery. And that involves the Implant 1000 unit, the surgical tray, a model with a guide, and also the demo implant. And let us look into the tray a little bit more in detail. And what you find here is the initial drill and the twist drills for full depth and cortical preparation. Together with a tap that could also be used uh, even though it's not needed for this model. And also the implant driver EVGS with the new functionality. So that is in short what we're going to do during this session. So first let us look into the guide and the model. And uh, first of all, you must secure the guide onto the model and feel that it's steady. And if you look a little bit closer into this guide here, uh, you see that there are two different tubes, metal tubes, or as we call them, guide sleeves. One that is uh, making it possible to uh, laterally uh, insert your drills and instruments and the one that is more the standard version that allows you to go from top down. Additionally, I would also want to uh, stress that we have this specific notch in the guide sleeve here that must be aligned with the implant driver uh, at the final stage when you do the implant placement. So it's time for drilling. And we have the implant 1000 uh, prepared here for 1500 rotations uh, as the maximum. Uh, RPM and what I will go through now is the first part of the drilling and then we will end uh, with a cortical preparation. So first of all to have full visibility into what I'm doing uh, I will direct this model towards the camera and we will drill with this open lateral axis uh, tube. So that will be my uh, implant placement today. And the first drill, the initial drill, will just make a small notch into the crestal part of the of the bone. So as you see here, I can move in my drill from the side and put it onto the actual bone and start drilling. And what I did was that I went down to the when the laser marking starts, because that is what is dictated uh, when you work with the 11 millimeter implant. Uh, for example, if you should have uh, done the drilling with an implant of 13 millimeter, you should have gone to the final part of this laser marking. So it's actually depending on what kind of implant length you're using. Uh, and now we come to the drills which has a sleeve on, like a drill stop. And you must be very careful here and see that this one is seated at the specific position onto the drill portion here where you can find a little dip or actually you feel it here very clearly that this is seated in a specific position. And then you go in again, laterally from the side here, and put it in the starting position. And then you start drilling all the way down. And carefully, I go up, still drilling, put a little pressure from the side. And when I'm in this final starting position again, I can take the drill out. I move on to my drill number three. I have the same approach here and see that this sleeve is placed on the uh, tip part here. So I go in with this drill number three, put it in my starting position like that.
I stop when I'm down, put a little pressure on the sleeve with my finger, and reverse the drill into the same position I had when I started, like that. We go to the next step, drill number four. Same procedure again. Put it in from the side, start drilling like that. Stop for a moment, control that I can go out without bringing the sleeve with me. Until I am in the position where I don't drill in the bone anymore. Then we have the cortical drill part left and uh, that is made with a drill that have a dual purpose. You can drill to full depth for all 6.5 and 8 millimeter implants, but it is also used for the cortical preparation. And that's why we have these bands on this drill portion here, uh, so that you can take a measure on how deep you want to go into the cortical part. Uh, and what you also find here is that depending on what length you have on your implant, uh, in our case the 11 millimeter, you should uh, go on one part of the scale here. So I, in this case, will go to the second band first level. And I will try to define that very clearly now when we are drilling. So I take the drill, put it in the handpiece, I go in from the side, put it in the starting position here, and carefully now start drilling and go to the marking I have uh, decided on. Like that, and when I'm through, I put a little pressure on the sleeve and go back. Just like that. Now I put this back into the tray and we have done the full procedure of the drilling with this prime taper guided surgery. I mentioned that you could uh, do tapping as well with the, this demonstration. Uh, and uh, if so, you go down to 25 RPMs and you take out the tap and put it in the handpiece and before starting to tap you also have to be very clear on how deep you should tap and as I said before depending on what kind of implant length you're using uh, there is a scale here that uh, you must pay attention to and we are working with 11 millimeter and that means we should go for a depth, in this case, for 6.5 millimeter depth of tapping, and that is the first part of uh, the first band. So I will show you how it works. You put in the tap from the side, like all of the drills, you put it in the starting position here, and slowly start tapping until you reach the first level of the first band. So I have to reverse this procedure and back it out with the same RPMs. So I switch on my paddle and go out very slowly and carefully take this tap out of the osteotomy, like that. And now we can look into the osteotomy. So now it's time for the final implant placement. Uh, so I go to 45 Newton centimeters, which is our maximum installation torque for this prime taper implant. Uh, I will use the implant driver for this purpose, first with this uh, handpiece and later on go to manual uh, together with the torque wrench and the surgical handle. Okay. So first I take the implant driver and put it in the handpiece. I take out the lid and pick out the implant very conveniently with the new 
driver function. I place my implant in the beginning of the osteotomy with some support here from the guide sleeve and start slowly to implant with the max limit set to 45 newtons. And you know this goes quite fast because of the prime taper design. So when I have roughly one millimeter left, I remove my driver like that and go to the manual stage of this implant placement. And underneath here I find the torque wrench and the surgical driver handle. And pay attention now that we should go in, in this sequence. So I put these together like that. And then mount the driver, snap it in there. And go back into the implant. And do the final placement very carefully and have visuals on the scale and see that I don't go over 45. I think I am flush with the guide and the first level of this implant driver and now I have to align so that the notch meets the notch in one of the six in the implant driver. So let's check now if we are in level with the bone. And as you might know, the bone is not perfectly flat, but it's a little bit rounded here in the crestal part. But I see that I have a very good depth of this implant and really covers all of the osseous bead surface. So I'm very happy. So that was the easy and very straightforward uh, handling procedures for the DS prime taper guided surgery concept. So thank you very much for watching.